Lord, thank you so much for uh, just blessing our time today, the opportunity to spend uh, just a few moments here with, with my friend Lou, my neighbor Lou. Uh, you've done such a miracle in his life, my life, and just uh, to be in, in community with him. It's so fun to watch uh, what you're doing in our lives, Lord. So just bless this time. Thank you for the opportunity to share this story. I know many people will be touched by it. They've already been touched by, by Lou's story. And I just pray that uh, this touches even more people to come to you, Lord, and give you the glory. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Louis, thanks Thank for you. joining today. But, so so you, I call you Louis. Yeah. But what is your real name? How do you pronounce your real name? Okay, let me spell it. L O A apostrophe Y. Luai. 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 Yeah. Love it. And uh, you know, we've we've lived well w I moved into the house in 2012 and you already lived there. Yeah. So how 2008. Long have you, so you've been there for 4 years. Yeah. And I remember when I first met you, one of the first things, and we talked about it briefly this morning, one of the first things is you're mowing your yard, and I'm like, what is he singing over there? Yeah. Do you remember what you were singing over there, the specific song? Not a specific song, but it was Christian songs. Worship that music? I was listening, yeah. Man, at that time, I don't think I wanted anything to do with... Right. <laughs> yeah. Anything to do with Lord at that point. Yeah. But it's crazy. I, I wanted to, I really wanted to start this off by kind of where you're at now with your walk with the Lord, because we've been... You know, you know a lot of my story, and mm -hmm. I think that's been, had some impact to where to where you're at as far as coming to love church. So, give me uh, just give everybody kind of a rundown on really how you found love church. We'll get into how you found the Lord and your relationship with Christ, but how did you find love church specifically? Yeah, so uh, we left a, a church that you know I didn't believe or didn't agree about their uh, teaching. And in 2009, uh, came over at Calvary Chapel. We walked in and we thought, this is it. This is where we need so to be So at that point, at. were we at Miller North at that point? Yes. Okay. You were at Miller North. Yep. And um, then we just kind of disconnected, um, went back to our home church. Uh, the wife liked it a little bit better than the, uh, the different style that sure. you guys have. Um, so fast forward. I start seeing a trailer parking in our cul-de-sac <laughs> and it says love on it. I'm going, love? That was probably 2018 at that point. Yeah. Late 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, when God started talking on my heart. And I think it was about similar time frame is when you sent me the clip of your testimony in April and that just blew me away. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I am next door neighbor to this guy mm who could have ended it a long time ago. So while I was pulling in the driveway and I saw you, remember I got out of my car and just gave you a big, huge hug? Yeah. And I knew I think you were getting the mail. Time, I think you were getting the mail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew at that time I, need, I needed a change. I felt the, the Holy Spirit's presence in you. It was just incredible. Mm. So, and you were pretty connected with another church at that point. You were doing some worship stuff, serving at another church. So yeah, that's yeah. always uh, been important to you. I was part of the worship team. Yeah. Uh, I was playing percussion. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was part of that worship team and I just felt like, hey, um, maybe it's time for a change. Actually, it was God that touches my heart and says, maybe it's time for a change. change. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, <clears throat> I remember that uh, uh, specifically that moment. And I, I, before we started filming, I walked in, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to cry through this thing. Because most <laughs> times, if we start sharing stories, yeah. uh, I'm an emotional guy, I'll go there. But I think another another uh, time where you uh, where you started coming to Love Church, and I encourage you to, hey, swing over to this small group that I help lead, uh, actually at one of our properties, yeah. uh, like a noon Bible study, men's group. What was your first experience at that specific oh, That blew me away. So how that story started is I was cleaning my garage and you kept saying, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm, I just got laid off from work. It's oh, that's right. Yeah. You know, uh, during pandemic. And I said, you know, I'm just taking time away, kind of re resting and see where God wants me to be. And you said, what about coming to our uh, Bible study on uh, at noon at 180? Yeah. So came down there and that was, that blew my mind. I could not believe the... <laughs> The, the language, the articulation of people's um, unpacking the scripture. I have never encountered that. And how long have I been at the other church since 1999, where I gave up my, my life to Christ? Yeah. It was 1999. Uh, so really 20, 
golly, to, oh, close to 20 years. Yeah. And never been in a... No, uh, uh, it was really very superficial, uh, surface level, sure. not superficial. Yeah, 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 yeah. But surface level, just read the scripture and move on. Read the next scripture and move on. Uh, there is no question. There is no unpacking. How does that affect you? I mean, when I saw with not just OC, but the other people that were involved in it, right. asking those kind of questions was just like incredible. That's what I love about that group. We're at some time, there's been times we have 30 men sitting around that group and we're, we're getting into the word and then there's challenging questions yeah. and there's discussion about it. I remember asking you about it afterwards. You're like, I, I've been a Christian for 20 years. I've been to small groups and life groups, whatever you want to call them. And I've never seen or really heard men discuss the Bible in that way, it, to that level and asking challenging questions, practical questions. Yeah. How do we leave here and implement what we're reading in the scripture? Exactly. That was, cool. uh, I remember I remember that. And, it, and you're still plugged into a small group here at the church. Yeah, two of them actually. Two of them, which one? Oh, cool. I go to, um, I was gonna to ask the me. Tuesday and then oh, yeah, I go Tuesday to the one. Fridays. And so one of those is on Zoom, right? Or uh, no, no, is it in person? Both of them in person, yeah. Cool, excellent. Yeah, and I know you're serving here on, in multiple areas, broadcast production and doing that. So it's, Yeah, and I'm loving it. Love to see you. If I need to put a plug in for people to <laughs> start joining, if you want to get involved and see how Christ works in, in the background, you need to join. Yeah. You need, you need to put, be part of the production. Yeah. You need to be part of something going on in the church. I just think it's crazy how how how. Jesus really brings people together because we lived we lived across from each other, a hundred feet at, mm -hmm. around a circle, and for really six or seven years we would say hi and and have a quick conversation. But it wasn't until I, you know, had a, a significant issue in my life mm -hmm. with my wife, and and things went south quick. And there was a really an, a, a, you you know the story, yeah. it, 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 you know, potential suicide, attempted suicide, where we actually got drawn together because of that story. Yep and started connecting and now it's fun to, you know, have other people in our circle see how we're living our lives. And just so I think it's crazy how Jesus can bring people together. Cause I, I assume if you would have looked out your front window on the night where April kicked me out of the house, you could have seen me walking down the street to go with my suitcase yeah. to go to my brother's house cause yeah. he lives down the street. And so it's just crazy. And like the desperation I had, there was something about you I just, I didn't know what it was, and it wasn't until we both realized, hey, we, we both believe in this guy named yeah. Jesus. I think you said, you know my buddy Jesus, yeah. <laughs> which I thought was really yeah. cool. And, and actually, to be honest with you, it kind of touched my heart in a different way as well um, of, me, of me not coming out and be a disciple to you, mm. um, showing you why am I so happy and singing all the time and um, praising God You know, when I'm mowing my lawn. Um, I really failed in that area. Wow. And I think you you exposed that to me to be more um, open about my faith, not to be ashamed. And uh, I think I learned the great lessons from it. It's not it's not just about you, wow. about your suicide or about your story. Yeah. But it was more impact of saying, Louie, there was a guy really living next door to you and you should have shared the gospel with him. Man, I never even thought about yeah. that. I th That's how I took it. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wouldn't have known. So thanks yeah. for sharing that. That's kind of where you're at current current status, you know, present day. But I think there's there's so much more, and I think we get into a lot of it. So take take us back to, because your story is crazy. <laughs> so where you where were you born? Okay, uh, I was born in Basra, Iraq. Okay, which is south of Baghdad, um, about maybe north of Kuwait. So let's expose your age here. How old are you? <laughs> sixty five. So sixty five. Yeah, I didn't know you were sixty five. So born there, and what was the community like? What was your f like family like? And really, what was your? Well, I'll let you go. I'll let you so, go there. Yeah, I was born to uh, a Muslim family. Yep. Um, my mom is Iraqi, and my father is from uh, Palestine, Israel. Um, he's from Nazareth. That's where he was born and raised in Nazareth. Um, my father moved to uh, Iraq to work on the pipeline, and that's how we got to meet my mom. The pipeline was owned by British Petroleum at that point. Um, and then I was born in 1958 uh, in Basra. Mm. Uh, we moved to Jordan when I was five years old. Um, no, I take that back, when we were three years old. And um, then I moved to England when I was eight years old. And I was raised in England from there. 
that's where the edge. I, I forgot where your edge. You moved to England. I forgot about yeah. that. So in in the Middle Eastern tradition, um, we don't belong to where we born. We belong to where my father was born and his father and my grandfather. So uh, really, essentially, I am not a. I'm not an Iraqi. I am more of a Nazarenean because of my father's heritage. And it, it's been so fun. We've been in small groups together. And as we're reading through, I think we're Old Testament at that point, or maybe even New Testament, you're able to articulate to us, like even we, you can see it in pictures. I think you've actually brought pictures over, yeah. but then describe like the geographical, look at the maps, the geographical locations of these things that are being mentioned in the Bible, which was really cool context for me because geographically challenged. I, I know huh. like the United States and yeah. then the rest, <laughs> like I don't, I, I can't articulate where these things are. That was really fun to have you in that group and go, well, this is close to that and this is why they're doing that. So that was, oh. and, and the society, like the way the societal, um, that society impacts where you're from and, and how that can change. That was just a huge revelation for me to go, there's so much more to um, scripture because how it's being told is because of how culture and society is over there. Correct. And we don't, that's not something we often get to grasp. It was new to me in that small group going, wow, there's more to this than I even, I, I had no idea that was the reason why yeah. some of these things were working out. Yep, exactly. So you were a huge no. blessing in that season for us. So thanks. Um, moved to England and you went to high school there. Is that right? I went to high school, um, actually uh, middle school, high school, and then I went to college. So um, all... I'm a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Okay. Yeah. And then from a, really from a, a faith standpoint, where were you at from, from really as you were raised and then up to college? Because that's kind of where we're at with the timeline. Where were you at with your faith at that point? Uh, there was none. <laughs> <laughs> I was born a Muslim, but my father really never went to mosque. I was never asked to read the Quran. Um, I know about the Quran. I know uh, scriptures and what, what it says. Um, actually, uh, Pastor Cap and I are meeting around that topic. Yeah. What does the Islam faith believe in? What does the Christianity, how does it line up? And also, I have some background on Judaism as well because I know very similar to Islam in the things that they believe in and the traditional culture things that they do. That's the fun stuff. We yeah, yeah, it's very similar to uh, Islam, whether they want to believe it or not. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, so really, no, no. Was that, was that the norm? I guess your friend group growing up, did they have any type of, of spiritual or faith background or, or was it just kind of that's how it was? Some, the, the, the people that we really uh, cult cultivated to were more of a modern Muslim, Sunnis, rather than Shiites. Shiites are very extremists. Okay. This is where you see the people from Iran, also from Iraq, there's this, a section in there that are Shia. But if you look at Saudi Arabia, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, all of that area, part of the Middle East, that's mostly Sunni. Okay. And Sunnis are really recognized as more mod, uh, mod modest. Maybe we can cut that out. Modest, <laughs> moderate. <laughs> uh, more modest in, the, uh, in their faith, uh, where Shiites are really going by the law, even if it's 2,000 years ago, gotcha. they still follow that, that law. So if you look at the Old Testament versus the New Testament, there is no such thing. There's always Old, te Old Testaments in the Quran. Um, so that's part of it. I think I might spoil it for Pastor Cap now. <laughs> that's all right. It'll save you time. Uh, yeah. But, you know, fast forward on what you asked me about my faith. Uh, actually, I didn't have any faith uh, at that time. I knew, I knew about uh, God mm -hmm. and Allah and how I needed to fear Allah because of his wrath if I did anything wrong. But um, I met this friend of mine from Jordan as well. He was a um, Palestinian uh, Christian. And I would uh, go to their home on, on the weekends. And um, then I would leave um, on Saturday evening, get on the train and go back to Birmingham. That's where my uh, university was. Yeah. Um, so anyway, one Sunday he said, why don't you stay over? We're gonna have a really big, beautiful Middle Eastern feast for breakfast. So that really intri intrigued me, but I... The food or the stuff? <laughs> the food. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, look, if I go with you to church, you can't tell anyone because this will be like a, a fatwa. 
meaning an assassination on my, on my head if I even walk into a church, right? So it, they promised that they will never speak of it. So I walked into the church and he said, just follow me for everything that I do. I said, okay. So he put his hand in the water and crosses himself. I put my hand in the water and crossed myself. I guess I did it wrong, so he made me do it twice. <laughs> uh, then we walk in and I was just overwhelmed by what I saw. That in the mosque, um, before I tell you what I saw, in the mosque there's a segregation. The women really can't go into the mosque. They have to stay outside in the courts okay. to listen to the imam, to listen to the message. Yep. Uh, children are not allowed to go in the, in the mosque. If you are 13 and up, that's the only time that you can go up, go in there. M male, but, but male just male. only. Yeah. Male okay. only. And then the oldest people will be in the front and the youngest people will be way in the back. Um, it's just the way traditional culture, I'm not sure if it's um, scriptural uh, from the uh, Sora in, in the Quran, but that's, that's part of it. So anyway, I walk into this church and I look at Nabil and I said, Nabil, they've got women, girls, kids, children. Are they going to go separate some, some other place? He goes, no, everybody's here. I said, oh, wow, cool. Can we date these girls? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first word. I was uh, 16 at that time. So, um, so I, that was the first thing that came out of my mouth. So we've discovered we cut that. food and girls might be some of your love languages. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at that time. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I went in and I actually, you know, since he told me to follow him for everything, the uh, priest was given communion. communion yeah. And I took communion at that time. And to be honest with you, Something, I felt something different, but I did not equate it to anything mm -hmm. till later on in my life. I look back at it and I'm going, I wonder if the Holy Spirit just planted that seed. Do you remember how mm -hmm. people always say, just plant the seed and mm -hmm. walk away? I think that's what, what happened. It's the seed was planted and it took a long time for it to, to harvest, to become. I, I know the feeling. Yeah. Same for me. <laughs> 41 years. Yeah. But going into, man, let's just go back. You said just you walking into that Christian church as a Muslim, you, you, you it's like, could have been game over. Like, were you nervous walking into that? Very, extremely nervous. Not just very, extremely. Uh, I was shaken. Would, would, is that something you told your family about at that point? No. Did you ever tell your family? Well, obviously, yeah, after not, a certain time, but yeah. 1995. Oh, no, not 1995. 19, uh, 1998 is when I told my dad that um, I think uh, I'm converting to Christianity. Uh, my parents live in Toronto, Canada. Canada, way, yeah. I think we'll get back to it, but what was his, or was it at the same time you told them? When you told them, hey, I'm going to, I there's this... Christianity, uh -huh. what was their reaction to that? When you said, I'm going to convert to Christianity or I'm going to follow Jesus, what was? Uh, disappointment, not anger. Disappointment. So the, yeah, disappointment okay. from my dad. So let me go back and tell you about my dad, where he grew up. Yeah. In Nazareth, you have Jew Jews, you have Muslim, and you have Christians. And actually, he went to a Christian school. Your dad? My father. Okay. When he was, he went to elementary middle school, high school, that was a, the Christian school. Um, it's called Altara Santa. But anyway, yeah. It's, uh, so he can go to a, I just like, he can, he can go to a Christian school, but he still, could he go into the church? I'm trying to get that dynamic. No. Okay. No. Okay. They did not go to church. They just went to, 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 uh, to the classes okay. or to the school. Yeah. Um, they did not, you know, enter the church because they are not, and the Jews the same way. They are not Christian, so they could not enter. A very, very strict Christianity in uh, in the Middle East. I'm not sure if you knew that or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very strict. They won't let you, if you are uh, a Muslim, they won't let you in. And the same with, with Islam. Like if you want to go in uh, for a tour, um, they ask you, are you a Christian? And if you are, if you have a cross, you have to hide it or you have to take it away. But you can't show it. Wow. So I'm, I'm going through a lot of uh, tangent part of it, but no, that's just kind of just fill it, fill yeah. the, you know, kind of give you a good exposure on what, how they believe and what, how they, we are treated back sure. then. So anyway, at that point, he was just really disappointed, um, not angry with me. 
and asked me multiple questions, why and why? And I said to him, well, um, actually just, I felt like it's not just belonging to the culture and it's just not belonging to a, a body. I just want to make sure that my kids have a principle around faith. Uh, and at that time, I, I'll have to admit it, at that time I, I used the word religion. Mm -hmm. Today, I will never use the word religion in my, in my vocabulary because that's not something I do. Uh, so faith is what really drew, drew me into Christianity. And I know you enough to say it's faith and then your relationship, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why you don't ever call it religion. Right. That's, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, gosh, you said something and now I'm going to forget the question I had. So disappointment, but even though there really wasn't a, a religion component to your father, it was just, hey, this is, our family is this way and you're kind of changing directions on us. Correct. Correct. You headed right on them. And that was 98? 98 when I should. Okay. Yeah. So in 19, 1999, this um, person comes up to me and goes, uh, so I, I love the way you you play percussion. How long have you been per playing percussion? I said, oh, I took it about five years ago. She goes, I love your tone. It's very um, uh, Latin, Middle Eastern culture to it, you know, beat. And I said, oh, I didn't know that. But anyway, next question she asked me, she goes, well, is Jesus your Lord and Savior? And I said, I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? She goes, have you confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I says, yeah, I can say it, but I don't know what it means. That's what I'm asking you. She goes, oh, well, I can't tell you what it means. You have to really find out for yourself. So she left me on an edge, not understanding what it really means. So we were at the practice that day on a Thursday. So it was getting late. And so I uh, grabbed my stuff and, and went home. But during that whole trip, my daughter was with me. During that whole trip, I'm thinking, what is that lady saying? Why do I need to confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? I'm already serving. Um, wow. Yeah, it didn't dawn on me. So I come in back over to, to the church on Sunday morning. We're playing the eight o'clock, we're playing the nine o'clock. And she keep asking me, hey, did you confess Jesus Christ to Lord and Savior? I said, what is this? What <laughs> do you want from me? And then there was a song that we're playing, I think it was the Mighty Fortress. And we were playing it. Now keep in mind, I played it in practice, played it on Sunday at eight o'clock, played it on Sunday at nine at nine thirty, not till the eleven thirty service where I just broke down in tears and finally figured out what what surrendering my life really meant. You cannot just say those words. People take it for granted of saying, oh, yeah, Jesus is not my Lord and Savior. You can't. You have to really live it. You have to let it fill your heart before you can just say that, he, that I have a relationship with him. So it took me a long time to, you know, confess it, but it also took me a long time to understand it and to have that relationship with Christ. It wasn't as simple as what everybody thinks because you go through trial and tribulation, a lot of things are thrown at you, not hatred, but um, are you sure you, you're in the right faith? Questions, are you sure yeah. you're in the right religion? Did I, did I make the right move? Why is this hypocrisy coming from the altar? Why is this talk about, you know, Jesus is this and Jesus is that, but, or they never mentioned the word Jesus, right? Right. And a lot of times. So um, I think I start building my discernment at that time. And I told you about it a while ago, you know, why, you know, I left the church and came to love church is because of what was happening. And he said, that's got discernment in you. Mm. You need to flourish on it. So anyway, um, so that, that, that was the time that I confessed that my father passed away in 2002 from cancer. And um, it took me a while before I really wanted to get baptized. And now I can tell you, I, I have been baptized by the Holy Spirit in a church. And uh, out, of the, out of respect to my dad, I didn't do it till after he passed mm -hmm. away. It's just part of, the, um, part of me, not part of any tradition sure. or a culture. It's just part of me out of respect to my dad. And your mom's still alive, yeah? Yes. 
What's that? What's the, What's that relationship like? It's a good relationship. She still, you know, uh, believe in Islam, um, but we do talk, and a lot of things are happening in this world. And she says, "When is Jesus coming back?" <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know he was coming back? And actually, the Quran says that Jesus will be coming back, but he will not go through the gate of Jerusalem, something like this. I, yeah. I can't remember what it was. So forgive me for going back to the point where you got emotional, and I think I know why, but what, what is it about that moment that just creates that? Because we're, we're, we're 20 years removed from that. I think it's beautiful. I actually have it tattooed on my hand to tell us the last words he, you know, but it's finished. said from a car, it's finished. Yeah. He died for us all, past, present, and future sins. And so I, it's a constant reminder for me, but what's, what about that specific moment that 20 years ago still gets you? I think it's just uh, the change in me internally and also outwardly um, and the thoughts that I, the the things that I think about now these days, the the um, the behavior I have towards other people, have changed me after I have said those words. Yeah, yeah. Because you're a let's let everybody that's listening. You're a sweetheart of a guy. <laughs> like you're one of the nicest people. I always have a smile on your face, and you'd do anything for anybody. And there's not, you know, we don't have to do good to get to heaven. Right. That's not right. Yeah. But we will know, you know, we do good works out of reverence to the Lord. Correct. He wants us to reach out to people and, and love and be kind and uh, show the fruits of the Spirit. Right. All those things. Yeah. So I just love, I, I wouldn't have, do, it, as a counselor too, I want to get on emotion. So that's why I had to go back there and ask that question. So <laughs> <laughs> forgive me. Um, so at, when did you get to the States? When did you get here? Uh, 1978. I came here. Okay. And um, Nabil went to... Sweden. I came to this state and went to Colorado. Um, went to CSU or CU um, for a couple of years. But during that time, um, they asked me if I wanted to take some elective because I missed the quarter by a couple of weeks to sign up for my classes. So I took this elective classes that they were given, which was uh, religion. And part of the religion was Islam, Judaism, Christianity. What's the difference? And that was the name of the class. So uh, the professor said, hey, I would love for you to join. What, what's your background? And I told him, he goes, oh my gosh, this is great because yeah. I'm teaching on Islam. So I was in the class and he said something about, I can't remember what it was specifically, but anyway, he was referring to the Quran or this is how they believe. Uh, oh, I know uh, that they don't have the name Jesus in the Quran. They don't believe Jesus. I said, no, I disagree with you. <laughs> they do believe in Jesus as the prophet. They don't believe Jesus as the son of God. And he goes, well, maybe you need to get up here and teach the class. <laughs> did you get up? No, <laughs> but I did answer a lot of questions during that time. And, um, and I think that's, a, that's another seed. Uh, I believe that God wanted me to miss those, that registration and belong to that class. And I learned a little lot about Judaism and Christianity, to be honest with you. And you're, um, now I'm just thinking, because like, I kind of have the cheat code to your story because I know it and I kind of know there's a huge, there's a huge part of this story that I think will probably end with. Mm -hmm. But I think it ties into the rest of your family. Are you the only, as far as, you know, we know parents, but um, any you know, like siblings, aunts, uncles, none of them have confessed Jesus or Lord. Correct. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So in my family, uh, like my dad, there, there were 18 kids. In, just in his in, family? Yeah, in my, my father's family, like uncles and aunts. Uh, I and thought my aunts. mom had a big family. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there was 18 of them. And of course, you know, total of the number of family in Israel, it's about 2,000 between first, second, and third cousins. Um, aunts, uncles, they're still alive as well. Mm. Um, but anyway, no one has been really have changed their religion or changed their faith to Christianity. I'm the only one that I know of. Um, the only one that is bold enough to mm. put it on social media, <laughs> anywhere that anybody asks me. So yeah, what's, um, do you get any? Yeah, I do get some flack, but a lot of people now these days, I mean, when Christmas comes around, they say Merry Christmas to me and I, you know, I send the same greeting back to them during uh, 
their uh, Ramadan or yeah. holidays. I love that respect. Yeah. You know, um, that shows a, a lot of humility on your part because there's no wh why we're supposed to build bridges, right? Not not tear them down. Correct. But I appreciate that yeah. about you. So I guess the the one I know we've talked about this question before, and there's a big. This is like the why why Louis? Yeah. Or Louis? Say it again for me. Louis. Louis. Yeah. Why you? Yeah. I asked that question many times. I asked that question of my Bible study group. I said. Do you guys know why why did God choose me out of out of my whole family? I mean, what is the, what is my what is so special about me that he chose me? And he goes, Well, you know, because you confess him as your Lord and Savior, because you wake up, because you are more intelligent, uh, because you are smart enough to understand the difference between this and that. And I said, No, some something is missing from this answer. I don't know I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna get down to it. So anyway, I meet with this lady. Um, she's she became like my my, my mentor, and she asked me a question. She this was, is this is about this, what time frame? Ten years ago? Was, no, no, no. I would say about 20, uh, 2018. 2018. Holy cow! Yeah. Okay. So she said, "Can you tell me your story? I'm so intrigued. I'll cook you dinner, but I'm really interested We're back in to your the food. Story. Food okay, again? There we go." <laughs> I'm food. You want you want to hear? It? You want to be my friend? Feed me. Feed, feed, feed Louis. Or let me feed you. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we sat down and I start telling my story. It's just what we started. Where did I grow up? Where was I raised? When did I move to England? All those kind of things. And she stopped me immediately. She goes, "No, I want to know about your your birth story." And I said, "What?" Why would you want to learn about my birth story? Because there is a story behind it. She had no idea. She had no idea. She had no idea. And nobody else had any idea except my wife. Um, so anyway, she just, I said, okay, I'll tell you my story. I was, I was born uh, in Basra. And during that time, you know, you, your birth is, happens um, in the home. You know, a, a mid, midwife. Midwife. Yeah. midwife comes in. You know, she delivers the baby. So I was delivered at home. And um, I was fine for about 30 days, 40 days. And then all of a sudden, my next door neighbor to my mom, uh, my mom's next door neighbor had a baby. So she went over to greet her and congratulate her on the baby. So she took me with her. Came back home. Um, two days later, I would not eat. I couldn't put anything down. So they took me to specialist. They couldn't find anything wrong. Finally, they drove all the way to Baghdad, which is about two or three hours uh, drive. Maybe longer, I can't, I don't know. Um, anyway, they took me to a specialist and he said, there's nothing we can do. We ran all kinds of tests. We've exhausted every aspect of it. Just take, take him home and bury him. Legit hospital specialist. Yeah. So my parents drove back to Baghdad and my mom will tell me that both her and my dad were just like sobbing, crying, that they have to take me home and bury me because I'm going to be dying. So anyway, my my mom walks in. Now keep in uh, keep keep in mind in the uh, Middle East cu culture, women can't talk to men. Men can't talk, go and approach a woman to talk to. Only men and men, women and women, okay. right? So my mom takes me and she goes upstairs to the uh, apartment building. My dad is coming up right behind her. This uh, Greek lady comes up to my dad. She goes, how is Lai doing? And he goes, not good. Well, they're exhausted, everything. She goes, listen, I, a, I got something for you. My, uh, my husband works in the slaughterhouse where all the lambs and the cows come in. She goes, take a blanket, a little cup, with olive oil in it. Here we go. It's all right, brother. Sorry about that. Um, she goes, take him down to the slaughterhouse. My husband, I will tell my husband you come in and wait in line. He's gonna wave you. Once he wave you, don't say no. One word. He's going to ask you for, for the baby. You give him the baby right away. And uh, my dad, okay. 
He does everything. I mean, he's exhausted every obstacle you can think, every avenue he can yep. save my life. He just exhausted it. But he believes in those kind of things. He believed that, you know, when somebody asks him to do something, he will just go ahead and follow it. There, there's nothing for him to lose. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. So he takes me down there. He's waiting in line. He wait, the guy waves him over. There is a specific um, timeline when the animal is being butchered. And keep in mind, everything is kosher, right? right. Same Islam and, and Judaism, Judaism is the same thing. Blood has to be completely uh, out of the uh, animal. Well, at that time, the animal has come in. The blood is not out of it yet. He sliced, sliced the, um, the belly of the, I'm sorry if it's becoming really graphic, but he sliced the lamb's tummy. He takes me, sticks me in the lamb and closes the carcass on me. Counts to whatever seconds, then they open the carcass. I'm all full of goo. Mm -hmm. He, he gives, gives me back out to my dad and um, then he takes the cup, slices the uh, stomach open puts the stuff, the liquid in there, uh, and swooshes it with the, uh, with the olive oil, so it's easier to swallow. Um, and then uh, makes me swallow it, he wraps me in the blanket, takes me home. Keep in mind for three months, or uh, no, actually, yeah, three months, three months, 90 days. I couldn't eat anything, couldn't put anything down. Um, I didn't even cry. My mom woke up to my cry the next day. And they could not keep anything down. I, I mean, I could not uh, get enough food in my, in my just, life. yeah. So I'm telling that story to to that person, and she slams on the table and she goes, "You were blessed by the blood of Jesus since the day you were born, and that's why He chose you." I've got, I've got, did, what, did you ever get to ask your dad what he was thinking when like he's given, he's given his son over to this butcher who's going to put him in a lamb and. You know, un, un, unfortunately, you know, I had never really, that story, that part of my story did not li really resonate in my head till, till just recently in 2018. Yeah. So as I'm telling the story, I had to go back to my mom and ask her, I said, is this true? Is this what really happened? And she goes, yeah. And I said, do you know that I was blessed by the blood of Jesus at that time? She goes, what? I said, yeah, it was the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. So, I felt, yeah. I, I love it because you probably have, over the course of your life, because you are the only family member, <clears throat> that was a question you had for so many years. And this, like, what was the background of the woman that was asking you these questions? The, the woman that said, no, I want to know your birth story. Like, what was her background? Yeah. yeah. She's a, uh, just a uh, Christian teacher. Wow. I mean, she knows the Bible inside out. Tabernacle, I mean, learned a lot from her. Yeah. And, um, yeah, she was just really a mentor and educator. Yes. Excuse me. A rampa, you know, the Bible. But somebody that finally was able to... Uh, help you answer that question that you probably had not struggled with, but questioned like, Lord, why me? Why me? Why me? Why me? Yeah. Why me? Yeah, exactly. It's powerful. How did your men's group react? I've, I've saw the mixed group we were in and, and it was like, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to look at the, yeah. the people in the room, but, but I know in our small group, there was probably what, 12 of us there. And it was just this, how did the men's group react when you told them that? Um, the Friday men's group, when I when I told it, it was so noisy that nobody really heard the impact from it. The people that were closer to me, they just could not believe it. Um, I mean, I could say their names, but I shouldn't. Um, that was the Josh Rosa's yeah. uh, time yep. uh, what, when he was leading. Yep. But I, he made me tell my testimony. <laughs> and I know I owe it to OC to tell him this, but um, unfortunately, it's just the timing did not work right. Yeah. Because I really wanted to share it with uh, a lot that, of the pastors in here. Yeah, yeah, wild. But yeah, there were there were um, there were some tears in uh, during that time. Yeah, yours and others. Yeah. 
just from the, you know, I guess, because this is really your story laid out in, you know, 40, 45 minutes. Has there been other, like any other pivotal type moments where you thought, or just, just revelations from the Lord, like, man, I am, I know this is this, I know this, I know this is real. You know, I know that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Has there been other, other crazy moments? Cause that, I don't know, I don't know if you can top the baby story, but is there, are there other moments that really stand out before we, before we wrap? Yeah, the other story, the, or the other confession that I can tell you is um, I became more aware of the truth versus lies that are coming, you know, directed at me. Um, expo- I mean, opened up my, not just my eyes and, uh, and my brain around what's going on, but also opened my heart to understand where is this coming from? So um, I really wanted to give up uh, being a Christian uh, in 2009. It's just uh, a very disturbed church on how they were um, delivering the message and the gospel. I just did not believe in it. Um, So (laughs) believe it or not, I got into Fresh Start Hmm. with Pastor Stephen. That was my first time ever meeting him. And um, so I told him my, my story because he asked, well, you know, why am I here? But anyway, I got involved with a friend of mine, Jeff, that invited me into the Fresh Start saying, hey, tell your story, but tell about the experience that you have walked. And I, I believe I really got cleansed at that time from all of this um, hypocrisy that was happening in, inside mm-hmm. of me and, and what I'm, I'm listening to. Mm-hmm and really made me focus more upward. You know how we always say, you know, why, why love church, you know, upwardly and... Yeah, love God, love people. Love, love God, love people. And that's what really, what I did, what I was missing is I loved people, but I didn't know about loving God that is going to drive me into understanding how people are. Yeah. Yeah, connect. It's, it's hard to love people. One of our, another leader that I love in this church says, man, I, I can't love people without Jesus. Yeah. It's just, I don't, I'm, I'm terrible at it. And so I, I think that's just, I love our, our, our logo. It's really simple. Love God, love people. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing that you, that you articulated to me earlier, as we were talking this morning too, is man, you're able to, <clears throat> you're able to, yeah, let go of that bitterness or that, just that frustration. But I think part of it too is you're you're in the word daily for yes. yourself. Yes. You're reading it and interpreting it on your own and not relying on somebody and then going, is that is that right? Well, yeah. no, you can you can find this you can find the answer yourself. Yeah. And that's something you didn't have for a lot of years. Exactly. You yeah. you would read it surface level and, and move on. Yeah. So yeah. I just think it's And the different avenues that our church leaders and you know, pastors are given us to not just to listen to them and listen to their interpretation, to listen to their experiences, which is very impactful, but to also given us the tools that we can go on our own and listen and learn and really grow internally about uh, with our relationship to Christ. Yeah. yeah. And I think for you, Lord, or for you, Lou, Lou I, is that right? Lou <laughs> I, yeah. Lou I. Your, your story, while super impactful, and we probably, we could go on for another half an hour and not even scratch the surface. I know, and I'm, I'm excited that I can, I'll live across from you for as long as I can until we move and maybe live in an RV, <laughs> if April lets me. But I'm excited to watch what the Lord's gonna continue to do through you. Um, and I get a front row seat. I get this seat to have the conversation and I get a front row seat to watch it. It'll be my pleasure. I'm blessed, brother.